Hi, I'm Long Steve, and in this video I'm going to give you some practical tips for porting games written using the Unreal Engine from PC to console. There are four specific things I'm going to talk about today, and this video will include some C++ and Blueprint code examples. So, item one on the agenda is the initial interaction screen. Uh, this is the classic press any button to start screen that you see whenever you boot into a game from your console system menu. Modern consoles support multiple controllers, and when a game boots it needs to determine which of these controllers the player is going to be using to navigate the UI and play the game. In Unreal Engine this is done by allowing input from any attached gamepad on the initial interaction screen. The gamepad where a button is actually pressed is then used by the game code with input events from that device driving the game UI and the gameplay itself. It will greatly help any console port of your game if you design this initial interaction screen as part of the game startup sequence. Most game startup sequences include a series of splash and logo screens, followed by a longer animated loading screen. It's after this you can present the initial interaction screen, but it's important to note that before the IIS has been actioned, the game cannot know which specific user is going to be playing, so you can only load generic assets. After the IIS processing, you will likely need a further loading phase so the game can load user progress and specific settings before presenting the main menu. I don't have any specific tips for creating the IIS yourself, however I recommend you create a separate level blueprint for your IIS and also a custom UMG widget to display the text. You can then use the any key pressed event within the level blueprint for testing on a PC. Being self-contained like this will make porting additions easy using the platform queries like is on Xbox or is on Switch. The implementation will have to be tweaked for each console port where some console specific code is needed to initialize the gamepad. Here I am skipping over the custom widget creation since it's just some static text. I've implemented the any key pressed event in the IIS level blueprint along with a bit of extra UMG setup to enable the keyboard focus. For this example I have used the Epic Games UMG Designer Quick Start Guide from their documentation website and enhanced it to include an IIS before the main menu. When the code runs you can see briefly the press any key screen and then the main menu subsequently. On to part two of the agenda which is gamepad UI navigation. If you have a UMG user interface for the front-end menu of your game, you might well have implemented it after going through the Unreal Engine UMG UI Designer Quick Start Guide from Epic Games' website. This is a great getting started guide, but it leaves out a concept that is key to console porting, which is of course using a gamepad to navigate the user interface. I have worked through this UMG example using the third-person template and implemented a main menu as instructed. I'm not going to repeat that work in this video, the tutorial web page is very simple to follow. What I'm going to do now though is show you the extra blueprint logic I've added in order to allow keyboard navigation. This is the most basic way you can implement keyboard navigation for a trivial user interface. Once you have keyboard navigation working, gamepad control is simply a matter of mapping the face buttons to appropriate direction and selection operations. If you follow the quick start guide yourself, you will end up with a main menu and an implementation using a blueprint like I am showing on the screen now. The difference though is that my implementation contains some extra logic in the construction and tick events, specifically where the arrays of buttons as are described on each menu are saved into local variables. These arrays are then used in the tick event to check each frame whether or not one of those particular buttons has the focused setting. If it is focused then we do a little bit of um, logic which will change the color of the text on the button. This color changing is of course very trivial and the most simple thing you can do to highlight a selected button, but it gives you the point in the code where you can then add your own animations and uh, pulsing and highlighting and whatever features you need. Here is the code actually running and my mouse cursor is not moving but I am using the cursor keys on the keyboard to navigate to the menu. You'll also notice a small dotted line highlight around each menu button. This is the default highlight that Unreal Engine uses and can be changed. 
on to item three now, which is the player controller object and its use and access within your blueprints and C++ code. One of the blueprint constructs that is used a lot is the getPlayerController method, which takes a player index value as its input. For single player games, it is very common to use this method all over, passing an index of zero. Unreal stores an array of player controllers internally, one for each local player. For console ports, even if your game is single player, to process the initial input screen it is necessary to allocate multiple local players and hence multiple player controller objects are created. This is specifically to allow for input on any and all connected gamepads to process the IIS. When this occurs, the player controller object stored by the Unreal Engine at index 0 might not be the one that received the initial input. This means any blueprint code or C++ logic that assumes player controller 0 belongs to the local user won't work. On console platforms there are additional reasons to avoid assuming player controller 0 is correct, including reasons of player data and state information that is maintained by the network and achievement subsystems. I recommend you create a C++ class containing a blueprint callable static helper method that itself calls the getPlayerController method. Exposing your custom method to blueprints allows you to substitute the Unreal getPlayerController with index 0 method for your own custom method. With this single method in place, any console ports that need to substitute a different player controller in specific circumstances can do so easily. As you can see, I have implemented two methods designed to replace the getPlayerController and getPlayerCharacter methods from the UGamePlay statics library. These are getActivePlayerController and getActivePlayerCharacter. And by replacing any use of get player controller in my blueprints with get active player controller, not passing in a specific index zero, but allowing the C++ code to um, to have that itself, then this removes any assumptions in the blueprint code that may need to be changed for console devices. And on to the final item I'm going to talk about today, which is the handling of external events. And this is also closely tied to game pausing. Console requirements are very strict when it comes to handling events generated by the system, such as incoming chat requests, game invites, gamepad disconnections, and lifecycle events like low power mode and rapid quit. It's not too important to worry about the exact mechanisms for these events yet, but what is very useful to set up early in game development is your own hooks to be able to trigger a game pause and resume. With these in place, you can easily test your code in critical sections such as loading screens. And then when it comes to a console port, it's clear where the system APIs can be used to trigger your game pause logic. To do this in Unreal on a PC build, I recommend adding in support for minimizing and maximizing the game window. These actions trigger methods in a custom C++ game viewport client class, and in turn, these can call methods in your custom game instance. Your custom game instance is easily accessible within Blueprints, and you can easily bind events to a delegate callback. After creating your C++ classes, one inheriting from uGame viewport client and the other from uGame instance, you need to override the lost focus and received focus methods in your game viewport client. These methods are called by the Unreal Engine when your game window is minimized and restored. Here, you can call methods within your custom game instance class. I have called mine pause and resume. Since it's early in development, all pause and resume do is broadcast to the delegate, but later on, as the code develops, your logic can be added here as needed. The delegate broadcast is important because it lets you add logic to blueprints to handle pausing and resuming wherever you need to. In particular, if the player is actively engaged in playing a level, the pause event needs to pause the game for them and show the pause menu. We can do this by creating a custom event that is bound to our on-game pause delegate. Lastly, to make sure all our custom code runs, we need to make sure the Unreal Engine is configured to use our game viewport client and game instance classes, and not its default ones. We do this by altering the project settings under the Maps and Modes section for Game Instance class and Engine General settings for the Game Viewport Client class. Now when testing the game I can minimize the window which triggers the pause event handling. As you can see when the window is restored the pause menu is on display. 
And that brings us to the end of my tips on things you can do when designing and coding your Unreal Engine game to make the console porting process as smooth as possible. I do hope you feel these last 10 minutes have not been a waste of your time, and please leave me any comments and feedback as you see fit. Thanks very much indeed, and I'll be back soon.